what we have here is the basic sine curve. And if you'll recall, the cosecant is actually equal to the inverse of the sine curve. And so, as you're starting to think of, well, where would the cosecant be in terms of its graph, one, thing's, one thing you know for sure is that when the sine is 1, the cosecant will be 1. Right? It's the reciprocal. Similarly, whenever the sine is negative 1, the reciprocal of that will still be negative 1. So if I'm graphing the cosecant, that's where those two graphs, the sine and the cosecant, are going to touch each other. Okay. On the other hand, if the sine is 0, the cosecant's not going to be defined at all. And so everywhere where the sine is equal to 0, which is where I put those lines, there are asymptotes there. That's where sort of like it's out of bounds. This is what the cosecant curve looks like because as the sine goes between 0 and 1, it's reciprocal. It will be greater than 1. And as the sine goes between 0 and negative 1, its reciprocal is going to be less than negative 1. And so that's what the cosecant curve looks like when it's all by itself. In terms of domain and range, you guys have dealt with that before, too. For the sine curve, the domain is all real numbers. Okay? All real numbers. The range is limited, however. Uh, for the parent function, for that, you know, for the parent function, it's limited from negative 1 to 1, and it includes those. Here, if you're looking at this function, what's the domain? Two polynomial numbers. Well, that's the question. Can you really plug all real numbers in and get an answer? You know, at 0, when the sine is equal to 0, you're, you're not going to you're not going to get any results from this function. And here at pi, and here at 2 pi, any multiple of pi is going to be out of bounds for the domain. This is not something that should be new to you because you've seen this before, right? If I have f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2. What's the domain there? Uh, I know that it can't be 2 because if it was, it would be undefined. Right. So it's all real numbers except for 2. As long as, you're, as long as you're not putting the 2 in there, f of x is happy. The minute you take 2 and use it as an x, it screws everything up. Does that look familiar, familiar to you? So that's what we're talking about here. If you look at the, at the cosine curve, the green one here is the cosine curve. And I did the same thing to it that I did with the sine curve. By the way, how do you know it's a cosine curve? Yeah, when x is equal to 0, the, the curve is at its highest point. It's at its maximum. And anywhere where the cosine is equal to 1, the uh, secant curve is going to touch the cosine curve because they're also going to be 1 because these, we're just talking reciprocals. Basically, it's all the same thing that we did a few minutes ago with the cosecant. This time, it's just really a phase shift, just like the cosine curve is a phase shift of the sine curve. The secant graph is a, a, a phase shift of the cosecant. Okay? It's just moved over a bit. And it looks like that. If you look at the two sine and cosine together, And you think to yourself, well, the tangent is the sine over the cosine. Well, now, all of a sudden, that creates some interesting things. 
wherever the sine and the cosine are equal, in other words, wherever those two graphs intersect, the tangent's going to be 1. So each one of those points we know is going to be on our curve. What else do we know? We know that where the, um, where the sine is equal to 0, the tangent will also be equal to 0. So it's going to be there. And we know if the cosine is equal to 0, we have a bit of a problem. It's undefined, which means that's where the asymptotes are going to go, where the blue curve crosses the x-axis, making, you know, making the, cos making the uh, cosine equal to 0. That's where the tangent is undefined. This is what it looks like with the, um, with the curve coming, you know, getting closer and closer to the asymptotes above and below, but never actually getting there. So the curve looks like that. Wherever the two graphs intersect, that means the value of sine and the value of cosine are equal. Okay? And if they're equal when I divide them by each other, I'll get 1. And you put that 1 on the... Bottom. Up here, right? Where... Because okay. the value of my function will be 1. My function is the tangent. This is a tangent function I'm graphing. I'm introducing these so you know about them, and you're familiar with the parent functions. Okay. Could you take these and transform them the way we've transformed everything else? Yeah, of course, you can do that with any function. You can stretch them, you can squish them, you can move them. Um, we're just not going to be doing a whole bunch of that. Okay, and these... Right. And the cotangent, right, which would be the, the inverse, the uh, reciprocal of the tangent... Would turn them reverse. Would do that. And that's that.